All right, guys, I've been asked to do a walkthrough on this 2016 Tiffin Allegro bus. Now, it was asked to be a quick walkthrough, but chances are, knowing me, it'll get a little bit too long. But um, at any rate, the best place to start a walkthrough is generally at the beginning. So let's go ahead and go to the entry door. We're just going to do our best to try to keep through understanding the important parts of the RV and what you'll need to know when using it. Right here's gonna be the entry console. The first button right there is gonna be your battery disconnect. Basically, this is the motor home on off switch. When you're gonna use the motor home, you click it to the on position. When you're done, you're putting it into storage, you're not gonna use it, you click it to the down position. It's basically turning the battery, the house batteries on. The light master, just what it sounds like, turn, push that button, turns on the lights on, push it off. And it turns everything off inside. Push it again. Turns them back on. Door locks, that's gonna be for compartment doors. That's how you're gonna lock and unlock. You can also just use the key fob that comes with it. Entry shade, just what it sounds like. There's gonna be a shade for the entry door. So right here, you have your entry light. You can turn that on and off. Now it's important to know that on any of these buttons that have a up, down arrow, that means you can dim those lights just by pushing and holding the button down. There you go. Entry light's gonna be your door light. The door light is actually this light that's right above the entry door, hence the door light. It's also going to turn the entry door awning light on and off. Right below door light is porch light. That's going to be an outside porch light. Now Tiffin has an outside porch light that's going to be right on that slide out right there. But they also, but they also have this one that says road light. There's a road light, which is a porch light on the driver's side or the road side. So I turn that on right there. You'll see the light right there. It's gonna be right here, this will be your entry step. When you have it in the on position, every time you shut the door, step's gonna retract. Every time you open the door, step's gonna open up. Now it's gonna be for that entry step right there. Now, of course, the ignition overrides that switch. So even if this were in the off position, you have the ignition key on and the door is shut, the step should still retract. Now it's pretty hot outside right now. I'm gonna put the awnings out. We have two box awnings on here. They are carefree awnings. You do have to have the power switch in inside in the on position. I'll show you where that's at. But right now I have the remote, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run them out. Let's hit awning one, which is gonna be the front awning. You have three positions for it. Uh, closed, just a little bit open. A little bit more open, out straight, and then all the way open, which comes down. So we do awning one to the full out position right there, and then awning two to the full out position right there. Now both these are boxed awnings. They're going to come out from the top and then they'll droop down. We'll go ahead and get those all the way out. Of course, the key to all awnings is if you're going to be away from the motorhome for any amount of time, make sure you go ahead and put the awnings away. These do have wind sensors on them, but they're not really wind sensors. They don't measure the wind. They, they measure the, the shaking of the awning. So check this out. We go to this awning and just kind of like shake it. It's going to start to roll back in on its own. All right, and it's gonna stop right there. If it starts to shake again, it'll go back in completely. Here on the sidewall, you have a docking light. There's two on each side. It's controlled by a switch on the dash. On your tires, you should check your tire pressures at least once a month or before every trip. In this front compartment, this is really just gonna be a little storage compartment. It does have a 110 outlet right here, but there's something special to know about this outlet. This is on a GFCI circuit, and Tiffin put a GFCI outlet in a very strange place. It's gonna be underneath the slide out here. So, this is where you would reset the GFCI outlet if it isn't working. You can hook up extension cords right there too, which is nice. It's handy, but it's, if you didn't know about that, you'd never find that. Right above right here is going to be your HDMI splitter box that goes to this outside TV. So if you need to get to your information or your splitters for the TV, that's where you're going to be. And of course, directly next to this one is going to be your outside TV. Really nothing too complicated on this. This will work the same way as all the inside TVs. It's important to know this is on a sound bar. The only thing that's important to know is that whatever you're watching on TV is going to be what's going to be on the sound bar. That's something you're... So you're going to control the sound from the TV from your sound bar. I've always found that glare during the day is almost impossible to watch the TV, so it's usually only useful at night. But your results might vary. All right, this front compartment, not going to be too much to see right here. You have your slide out refrigerator. 
pretty straightforward just to lift up the two latches right there slide it out now once it's all the way out you can control it on the side right here do be careful with these latches they are prone to breaking and they are hard hard to find replacements right now the real key to this button is you have to push and hold the on off button to turn it on or off this next compartment, you have your slide out tray. That's going to be electric slide out. You just control it with a switch right here. It'll come out. It also, you can control it from the other side too. This next compartment also has a sliding tray. And again, the button's going to be right there for in and out. What's kind of cool on these basement lights is they have motion detectors. Do make sure your cargo light switch is turned on for the basement lights to work. So you can have them on or on motion control. There's a little motion detector right there. So it would turn on when you open the door. Personally, I found the uh, motion control to be a little bit um, irritating. It turns on and off when you don't want it to. Now on the outside is gonna be this little vent. That's actually refrigerator access for your water shutoff. But there's actually a lot of connections behind there for the, the TV hookups. So if you're having an issue, take this off. It's kind of jammed in there. Take a look. Next to this compartment, you have your gravity fill for your fresh water tank. It just takes a 751 key. Now you do not have to use this. This is just gonna be an emergency fresh water tank fill or if you're dry camping and you need to fill up with buckets, that's where you would fill it up from. Otherwise, uh, you, you're gonna fill up the fresh water from the other side. I'll show you how to do that. And you have another storage compartment right in here. That'll give you access to your aqua hot and also your central vacuum cleaner. Right up here is gonna be where you change out the bag. Just open that door up to get access to the bag. Follow this around, past your drive tires, your tag tires. You'll see in between your tires right there, you have one of your leveling jacks. You have four hydraulic jacks, two at the rear, two at the front. If you're gonna be putting these down in the dirt or rock, it's gonna be a good idea to put blocks underneath there so they don't sink into the ground. Right in here is gonna be uh, your chassis service bay. You have your chassis batteries located right here. They're 12 volts, it's always 12 volt. They're sealed non-serviceable batteries, so you don't have to check the water level on them. Right above is your battery disconnect. Rotate it to the off position to turn your batteries off. You only do that when you're putting it into storage where you're not going to be using it. Right over here, you do have some fuses. This is chassis fuses for the chassis itself. Yeah, you can just pop those covers off to get access to the fuses. Check your owner's manual to know what each one of those fuses are for. Again, that's for the chassis. These are actually circuit breakers. It does say rear chassis power breaker, front chassis power breaker. You can actually turn them off to the off position if you want to, but these are our circuit breakers. These controllers right here are the two Schwintec slide controllers for the two bedroom slide outs because they are Schwintec slide outs on the bedroom. You can say with the little rack and pinion right there. All right, back behind, you just have your engine door. We go around to the other side. Hopefully you guys can hear me. This right here is going to be your DEF or diesel exhaust fluid. This is diesel exhaust fluid, diesel exhaust fluid only. Cannot stress how important it is to make sure that you don't run out of def. I like to keep it at least a quarter of a tank when I'm driving at all times. If you let the def tank go empty, you're going to go what's called limp mode and you won't be able to drive too far. And you'll have to get some service work done. Now there is a gauge on the dash to let you know how much def fluid you have. This is of course your engine and radiator. You can hose it off, do not scrub it, do not power wash it. Down to this first compartment. This is where your shore cord is going to be. This is 50 amp service 110. Of course, this is how you're gonna shut the door. Put the cord right through there. It is manual out, but power back in. So you have a switch right there. You gotta roll it back up. You just pull it out. Now you can put an adapter on it to go from 50 amp service to 30 amp service. But if once you do that, just one AC at a time. Right over here is a built-in surge protector. So you don't have to get a surge protector to put on your shore cord. You already have one built in. Right above is going to be your aqua hot fuel filter. Uh, so whenever you're going to service, that's where the fuel filter is going to be located. Right next to that fuel filter is going to be your transfer switch. Right past the, the transfer switch is going to be aqua hot control board. It's going to be pretty important if you don't know how aqua hots work. Now, it's not uncommon for RV house batteries to go dead. If your batteries get too low, the aqua hot is going to lock itself out. What will happen is Right down here, you'll get a red low voltage voltage fault and the diesel burner will not work anymore. In order to reset that, you have a little hole right there. I normally just get a ballpoint pen, take the straw out right there, and I'll just push that back in there to reset that light. There's a little button you can kind of feel push in there. And that'll reset it. Now, of course, your control board is just the brain of the Aqua Hot. All the user interface is going to be on the inside. I'll show you how it all operates and try to explain it when we get on the inside. Right next to it is just going to be the, the surge tank for the 
hydronic heating coolant that's used in the system. Now it is a non-toxic boiler antifreeze. So when it's cold, you wanna make sure it's in the cold area right there. Now this is not engine coolant antifreeze. This is the hydronic antifreeze that gets pumped the little radiators inside to make the air hot inside. So do not put engine antifreeze in there and it's definitely not winterization antifreeze that you would use to winterize an RV. It has nothing to do with those two components. Just use non-toxic boiler antifreeze. And that's pretty much that compartment. And right in here is gonna be your water compartment. There's a lot going on in here for sure. Right here, your park cable hookup, portable satellite dish hookup is gonna be labeled tripod. The other end is gonna be on the inside. Now, just like your, your shore cord, you have a water hose right here. This is gonna be manual out and then power back in. This is your city water connection right there. Do make sure you're always using a water pressure regulator whenever you're hooking up at a park. Uh, to fill up the fresh water tank, you're gonna hook up the hose right here, move this handle right there from city fill or city water down to tank fill. It is labeled right there, tank fill. As soon as you move that, it's gonna start to fill up the fresh water tank. The fresh water tank is located right here. You can kind of see the level on it. Once the tank is full, it's gonna to start to overflow on the ground. Uh, it's important to bring this handle back to the city water. Think of this as a normal position. The only time you move this is to fill up the fresh water tank. Once it's full or you're done filling it, bring it back to normal. Right, this is gonna be a 110 outlet right there. It is on its own GFCI again. We'll skip this for now. Outside shower is pretty self-explanatory. You have your outside monitor panel so you can check your battery voltages, your fresh water tank in percentages, gray water tank, black water tank. Now you don't have any propane so it says open because there is no propane. It's an open circuit. There's your, your soap dispenser. You can fill that up with whatever soap you want to fill it up with. Right here you can turn the water pump on and off right at this point. You can also do it from the inside at a whole bunch of different places. Right over here is your whole house water filter. It is not RV specific in any way. You can pick it up at any hardware store. Uh, your wrench is gonna be located right there. You'll just put it on and unscrew it in order to uh, change out the filter. Right next to the filter is your aqua hot basement thermostat. So you do have a heat exchanger for the water bay. If your aqua hot is turned on and it gets too cold in here, it will keep this bay warm and keep it from freezing. Don't play with this thermostat. We don't need to keep a basement at 80 degrees. Right below that's gonna be your actual water pump. Past the water pump is your low point drain valve for hot and cold. That's good for winterization or sanitizing your fresh water plumbing itself, your hot and water cold plumbing. Way back here, you won't really worry about this valve. That's just gonna be a service valve. Turning off fresh water feed to the water pump for servicing. Down here, this big blue ball valve, that's the fresh water tank drain. It's just gonna drain to the floor of the compartment and then through that hole down below. Better now. Your deck plate, so you're gonna go ahead and run your sewer hose out without leaving the door open. Speaking of your sewer hose, so you have your two wastewater tanks. You have gray tank with a gray handle, black tank with a black handle. Black is the wastewater from the toilet. Gray is wastewater from the sinks and shower. Now we do recommend chemicals in both holding tanks, both gray and black. Uh, of course, we only recommend RV Marine style toilet paper down the toilet. It's vital because uh, the rear bathroom on this has a macerating toilet to only use RV toilet paper. Get, get in the habit of using that. To open up the valves, just pull straight out on the handles right there. They're pushed straight back in to close them off all the way. Now your sewer hose is gonna be hooked up right here. If you want to, this whole thing does swivel. All you do is just grab right there and it will swivel. Do not jerk this thing hard. We do not wanna pull the piping out of the tanks. That'll be gross. Kind of the last feature in here that it did skip is your black tank flush. This is a sprayer head that's built straight into the black tank itself. So if you wanna rinse out the black tank, just make sure your sewer hose is hooked up. Your black tank valve is open. Leave it open. Go ahead and hook up the water line right to there. It'll start to rinse out the black tank. It's nice to use a clear adapter on your sewer hose. That way you can start seeing when it's running clean. Once you're done, go ahead and turn the water off, disconnect your hose, and then go ahead and close your valve. Now I will point out your aqua hot exhaust is right here. So do be careful where you're routing your sewer hose and your water hose so that you're not melting them when the aqua hot diesel burner does turn on. Now this compartment is just going to be the other side of the other compartment. So you have another switch right there to control this slide out. Kind of the same situation right there. You have another switch to control the slide out right here. Right above this unit right there is the inverter. The inverter is the heart of your motorhome. Now the inverter is a dual purpose appliance. Its primary function is as a battery charger. So as soon as you hook up the shore power or turn the generator on, it's going to start to charge the battery. It's a smart three-stage charger. It'll start with a bulk, go to absorption, which is like a medium charge, and then a float, which is a, a low charge, so you aren't boiling your batteries. That's all automatic. You don't have to turn that on. You don't have to worry about it. The 
Other function is as an inverter. Well, it take battery power, 12 volt power, and invert it into 110 power. It does not power up the entire motorhome. It's just gonna be a few select circuits. Generally, your refrigerator for sure, your microwave, most of your uh, receptacles, and of course your TV entertainment center. Control the inverter, there'll be a remote panel inside that I will show you. And this bay right here is gonna be your house batteries. You have six six volt golf cart type batteries. They are wet cell batteries, so you should check the water level on them at least once a month or before every trip. It does tell you how to do it right there. It's just a speed lock, just undo it right there and pull straight up on it. It is a release so you can actually slide the batteries out if you want to. Now hidden right next to the batteries, you have your battery disconnect. This is a house battery disconnect, just like that chassis one. This is a long-term disconnect. You go ahead and rotate that to the opposition, again, if you're putting it into long-term storage. Now when I say storage, that means you're putting it somewhere where it's not gonna be used and it's not being plugged in. If it's being plugged in, you are using the motorhome, so do make sure your battery disconnects are in the on position. Right next to our rest of all this is gonna be uh, some fuses. They are labeled what everything's for, and it's gonna be mostly service access. You should not have to worry about any of that. But directly to the left of the batteries is gonna be the hydraulic pump. So this one controls your hydraulic leveling and your slide outs on the front. The only thing that's really important to know is that if your jacks are stuck in the down position, you can manually re release your jacks. Uh, to do that, be difficult for me to show you on the other side of each one of these fittings right there is going to be a valve that looks just like this one right there uh, one for each jack rear jacks are the outside valves the front jacks are going to be the inside valves they'll have a little tiny flipping handle like this you can just go ahead and move it like that that'll release that pressure and let the jacks retract to manually retract these hydraulic slide outs you're going to want to call service mobile service to help you retract those is not something you're going to want to try to do by yourself it's not something I even like to do. This is going to be where you fill it with diesel, diesel fuel only. Now, do remember that your generator and your aqua hot run off the same fuel from the same tank as the engine. They will both generally run out of fuel about a quarter tank so you don't run yourself stranded. That means a quarter tank of fuel is, all, is reserved for the engine so you can get to the gas station. So if you're running the generator or the aqua hot and all of a sudden they both stop working and you're at a quarter tank, go get some fuel. It's going to be another one of the docking lights. Now, in this front compartment right here, no storage whatsoever. You have a lot going on. You have an air hookup for your onboard air compressor. Now remember, your engine is your air compressor. So you, can up a, you can hook up a hose to check your tire pressure. Just do make sure your engine is running. Uh, right here is your 12-volt uh, distribution box. It is labeled right here what everything's for. These little white buttons are circuit breakers. If they're tripped, they'll pop out, push them back in to reset them. And again, that's going to be for the, for the house side. You have some more fuses underneath caps right there. But the most important thing to know about, because it's hidden, there is a handle right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. So you're just gonna pull on that, we'll unlock the generator, and then you can slide it up by hand. And with it in the all the way out position, you can see your generator re really easily. This is a diesel engine, it does have glow plugs on it, so to start it, you just have to push and hold that start button down. Uh, in really cold weather, it could be 30, 40 seconds before it starts to crank. If you did run it out of fuel, or it's been a while since you ran it, you can push and hold the stop button, and that'll turn the fuel pump on, and that'll prime the system up a little bit. Just hold it down for five to 10 seconds, then go ahead and start it. You notice your hour meter right there. You want to run the generator at least an hour a month under a load. It's perfectly safe to run the generator driving down the road. You'll probably want to in order to run the roof ACs for any passengers behind the driver. You want to service the generator about every 100, 150 hours. The service schedule, maintenance, and capacity information is all going to be right there behind this door. Engine oil dipstick for the generator, engine oil fill, and of course your engine coolant reservoir. Uh, it's easier to see right here on this side than on that side. Right behind the air, uh, that coolant tank is going to be where the air filter is located if you need to replace the air filter. The last important thing to know about is right there, that's a 110 circuit breaker. If you're running the generator and you never get any power inside or you do all of a sudden lose power, go ahead and turn this to the opposition back on to reset it and then hopefully you restore power. Hidden directly to the right of the generator is going to windshield washer reservoir. But to close the generator, all you're going to do is push it closed. Do make sure you hear it lock or pull on it. You don't want to hit the brakes and have the whole generator slide open up on you. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much the exterior of your motorhome. There's just two more things I need you to know. At least once a year, get on the roof or have the roof inspected for any physical damage. Uh, and on the exterior, you need to, do need to wash and wax it just like you would a car. I prefer just the wash and wax method. So the wax is in with the, uh, the wash. 
but it's important for longevity of the paint to wash and wax this regularly. That goes for the roof too. It's a one piece fiberglass roof. So you do need to make sure you protect the roof. Now the roof is not intended for spectating or furniture. Uh, if you do get on the roof, do be very careful. It can be quite slippery up there, especially if it's windy, dirty, if there's rainy, or of course, if there's snow or ice. So do be careful up there. It's a long ways down. Let's go ahead and go inside now. I'll go ahead and right here. There is a little storage drawer right there that does open up. You have your wait to start light right there. Do make sure that's off before you start cranking the engine. On your gauges right here is pretty straightforward. You have your engine uh, oil pressure, coolant, pre <laughs> coolant temperature, uh, your, your road speed right here, and then your engine speed, and then your tack right here. Right below is gonna be your fuel gauge, and there's that def gauge I told you about. It looks kind of like a sweaty ice cream cone. So right now we're about three quarters. So that's that def, or diesel exhaust fluid. Over to the left right here, you have front air and rear air. This is a diesel unit, so it does have air brakes and air suspension. So you have front and rear air tanks. That's just a redundancy. It has nothing to do with what pressure is in the airbags whatsoever, just what's in the air tanks itself. Uh, there's only two things that I actually care that you remember from this entire walkthrough, and that's going to be right here. This is your park brake. Before you leave the driver's seat, do make sure you have this park brake set. You pull out on it to set it. You push in on it to release it. The park brake will not release unless you have uh, about 60, 70 PSI built up. So if you were to just push this in and you didn't have air pressure, it would just pop back out again. Now I only point this out because in your transmission, you notice we're in neutral. There is no park gear in this transmission. So if you were to walk away from this driver's seat with, with the engine turned off, you are in neutral. And if you did not set that park brake, this entire motorhome will roll away and it will not stop until it hits something. Do make sure you set the park brake. Forget everything else I said, just make sure you set that park brake before you leave this driver's seat. When it comes to the air pressure, before you drive down the road, you wanna make sure you have your air pressure built up. To build the air pressure up a little bit faster, you can set the uh, cruise control on, just turn it on right there and hit the set button. And that'll put you in high idle, about a thousand RPM, and that'll build up air pressure a little bit faster. You'll hear the air tanks pop off when they're completely filled. Right over here is your headlights, that's your parking lights, headlights pull out on it, that's your fog lights or your driving lights. The little button right here is the, the dimmer for your gauges on the dash. Right above right here is your mobile eye. That's gonna be for your adaptive cruise control. I will let you read the owner's manual on how to operate that correctly. But your cruise control is gonna be on the steering wheel right here. So even though we're in high idle right now, I could either turn off the high idle or hit the brake. And that'll take us off high, high idle just like uh, the cruise control. It is going to be important before you drive down the road to have the air pressure built up because your airbags or your air suspension will not be aired up until you have your air tanks completely full. You'll know immediately, you'll put it into gear and you'll it'll bounce very, very vigorously. Just stop, put a neutral, let it air back up again. Out of your steering wheel, you have this uh, knob pulled it, pull it towards you that allow you to tilt. If you push down on it, that allow you to telescope the steering wheel. This little button right here that looks like a headlight does not turn the headlights on. That just flashes the headlights so you can talk to other drivers. The one over here that looks like weird lights, that flashes the marker lights on top again so you can talk to other drivers. Your wiper control is pretty straightforward. You have your wash function, your intermittent time, and your high and low. The middle button's gonna be off. There's gonna be your volume up and down for your radio. And there's gonna be your tuning buttons right here for the radio. Your auxiliary start, in case your engine battery is dead, you can start the motor home with the house batteries. Just push and hold that button down. Start the engine like you normally would. Once it's started and running, you can go ahead and release it. You have adjustable, adjustable pedals right there, in and out. Right next to it is your engine preheat. Again, that's gonna be if you're camping somewhere where it's below freezing outside, that's how you're gonna turn your engine preheat on because diesel engines generally don't start very well once it's cold outside. This little red light right there is just an indicator that your jacks are down. Transmission control is pretty straightforward. N is neutral. If you put it in D, you have six and then one. A six means you have six forward gears. It automatically shifts from first all the way to six, six being overdrive. Currently, we're in first gear. As we were to shift up to second, that one would turn into a two. Now, if you're towing something or you don't want to shift into overdrive, five. Now, it won't shift past five. I like to go ahead and hit neutral, hit the park brake, and then go ahead and turn the engine off that way you don't forget to do it all your power mirror control is pretty straightforward l for the left mirror r for the right mirror and that's mirror heat right there you have your driver's window shades right there that's how you're going to control those this weird looking switch right there is your driver's window it's a power window 
That's how you can operate that. Air horn, just what it sounds like with the air horn turned on. You have an air horn. Engine brake, if you're not familiar with the engine brake, this is a true jake brake or compression brake. Middle's the off position. When you put in high or low, that's the about braking that you're gonna get from it. When you let off the accelerator, you'll actually feel the engine slowing you down. It'll, it's actually tied in your transmission too, so it will shift you down automatically. Uh, your tag dump, your tag axle is your rear axle. If you were trying to make a sharp turn driving forward, you can go ahead and release the pressure on the airbags for the tag axles. You can turn a little bit better. And when you go in reverse, it will automatically dump those airbags. Suspension up and down, that's how you could get off your air suspension if you wanted to, just like it says. Right here's gonna be your hydraulic leveling. It's pretty straightforward. All you have to do is go ahead and turn the engine on, hit the auto button run once. The blue light will turn on. What it'll start to do is start to level the motor home up. So these red lights indicate the corresponding jacks are no longer stored. The yellow light indicates the low side of the motor home. So right now the driver's side and the front are low. It's gonna extend the driver's side jacks until they touch the ground and try to level it side to side. And then it'll extend the other jacks until they touch. What it's trying to do is get rid of all these yellow lights. Now once it is level, all the yellow lights will be out. That audible alarm and that red light indicates that your jacks are down. If you don't want to listen to that, do make sure you just turn the engine off right there. If you want to, you can operate this manually. Instead of hitting the auto button, just push these buttons right here. You can level it manually for yourself. Uh, to retract the jacks, just go ahead and hit the store button right there. Now, of course, the age-old question is, do I level the motorhome or do I put the slide-outs out first? You should level the motorhome before you operate the slide-outs. Uh, if you are doing an automatic level, it's going to be a good idea not to be walking around inside throwing that level sensor off. If you need to make adjustments afterwards, go ahead and make adjustments afterwards manually. To retract the jacks, just go ahead and start the engine up right there. And you just hit the store button right there, the auto store button. Just push that. What it will do is allow air back into the airbags and retract the jacks at the same time. Now, once your last red light is out, that means your jacks are fully retracted. But do not turn the system off or turn the key off. It has a store cycle to it. Usually about six to nine minutes, then it will turn itself off. If you do interrupt that store cycle, the jack could be sticking down like a quarter of an inch. Well, probably about seven eighths of an inch. And with road heat, engine heat, it could cause a little bit of thermal expansion on the oil, pushing that jack down just at about an eighth of an inch, just enough to, to set that alarm off driving down the road, which is alarming. Uh, and the only way that can happen is if you interrupt the store cycle, because it is a uh, spring retract. So just don't interrupt the store cycle. It'll turn itself off. It's pretty self-explanatory what's going on right here. There's going to be USB and auxiliary input to the dash radio. Your backup camera is going to be right here. It is hooked up to the turn signal, so if I turn the turn signal on to left turn, it'll be, go to left camera. You can get a whole bunch of different settings on it, however you want it to be. Right below is your step cover. The passenger is going to have control for this as a step cover, so the passenger's feet don't dangle into space. You can go in and out with it right here. But you can also do it from that console over there. Solar shade's pretty straightforward. So your night shade is the night, night privacy shade, and the solar shade is what they're calling the day shade right there. Right next to it is going to be your generator start stop switch. This works just like the one outside on the generator itself. Map light, just what it sounds like, turns on the ceiling light for the driver. Dock lights, remember I showed you the dock lights on the outside. This is how you turn those on and off. This radio switch is going to be for the dash radio. It doesn't work off the ignition switch. It works off its own switch. That has to be on for the dash radio to work. Now, this, this dash radio does have a lot of different features to it. You have navigation with a great RV navigation system on it. Your, satellite, your CD player is right above. It also has Bluetooth connectivity and, of course, is your radio. Right below is just going to be 12 volt outlet USB hookup for charging. Your dash AC controls are right here. It works just like a normal car. The engine has to be running for this to work. And to make cold air, your uh, snowflake has to be on right there. The passenger seat's just about as simple as a driver's seat. Map light, step cover, exterior accent lights on the front of the motorhome. There are little blue lights underneath the ground. That's where you can go ahead and turn those on. Shade controls, slide out box light. So underneath the slide outs are some LED strips you can turn on and off right there. And porch awning light. This is just going to be strip LED lighting that's on the awning itself. They're really bright at night. They're pretty nice. Over the passenger seat, you have a lot going on. So you want to watch over the air antenna where it says on TV. Make sure that red light is on. If you're hooked up to park cable on the outside, make sure that red light's off. That's about all you have to do right there. This one that says awning in and out, that's going to be for your entry door awning. And what you have is two analog thermostats that's going to control the heating and cooling for the entire motorhome living room area. So this is the front AC. This is the mid-coach AC. It's kind of laid out. This is in front. This is the next one. 
it works just like a home thermostat. You bring it to the cool position, set the temperature you want right here. The cold air is going to come out of the ceiling right above. I recommend leaving the fan in the auto position. The fan will only run when it's calling for cold air. You leave it in on, the fan will run continuously whether you're calling for cold air or not. You have high and low, it's going to be fan speed. Now this is going to be true for this thermostat and the bedroom one. Your other modes are going to be gas heat and electric heat. So electric heat is just your roof AC in reverse. That is to say your roof ACs are actually heat pumps. So you can have hot air coming out from, from the ceiling too without using any diesel. Uh, once it gets below freezing outside, those heat pumps won't work anymore. And so you have your primary heat source, which is, of course, your aqua hot uh, boiler. So you have what's called a gas heat because this is an RV thermostat. It would have been set up for propane, but your gas heat is actually your aqua hot hydronic heating. Important to note though, if you put into gas heat and turn the thermostat to whatever temperature you want, you will not get any heat until you have the aqua hot diesel burner turned on. So this does not turn the aqua hot on. You have to have the diesel burner turned on. I'll show you how to do that later. The hot air for the aqua hot hydronic heating is going to come out of the floor area down below. Won't be too much to see in there or there. <laughs> this is going to be the solar charge controller. There's really nothing for you to do. It's just going to be showing you if the solar panels are actually working. It's all passive, no controls you have to worry about. Right in this compartment, right above the driver's seat, you do have a little bit more information to go through. There's your energy management system. Uh, also knows your load center. So you can see what kind of power is coming in right there, how many amps you're using on each line. If you start, if you're plugged into 30 amp or less, it will automatically shed circuits for you and it'll tell you if they're shut or not. Right now, everything's on. There's really nothing you have to do on that. Again, this is all just going to be information for you to have. All right here's your slide out controls for your front two slide outs, drivers and passenger front. You notice this blue light. Your slide outs will not work until the slide out ready light turns white. To make it turn white, your key ignition has to be in the on position. Your engine should be running. So now it's operating. So do driver's side, retract. So that'd be the slide out going in and out. Now, of course, before you operate a slide out in or out, do make sure you have room to run it in and out without hitting anything. Uh, so that's how you're going to operate the front two slide outs. And it's going to be definitely important that you make sure the driver's seat's out of the way and the passenger seat is out of the way. It will destroy the back of these seats. You have a satellite, a dome satellite dish right here. That's how you would turn that on. This will not work unless you have a satellite receiver hooked up to it and programmed. This is going to be your awning control for your two patio awnings. Your power button has to be on for your remote to work. Okay. Right below is going to be the sensitivity for that wind sensor, which is really just a motion detector. And the last feature in here is going to be your inverter control remote panel. Uh, it turns itself off so you don't have a green light all at night. How you want to have it all the time when you're using it, because you do have a residential refrigerator, which runs on 110 power, is to have that inverter light on. With that inverter light on, as soon as you were to unplug power, the inverter would automatically turn on and, st and keep the refrigerator going. Now driving down the road, the engine's always going to be charging the house battery, so you shouldn't have to worry about battery voltage being an issue. Uh, you do have solar on the roof. It's, I think, about 150 uh, watts of solar up on the roof. If you're doing prolonged dry camping, you will either have to run the generator periodically to charge the batteries back up or start m metering your, uh, your power usage. That way you don't run your batteries dead. The battery charger, we're in float charge. That's completely automatic. You didn't have to do anything on that. The rest of that is explained right here. Everything works, but those are going to be the most important things to know. No, if you want to turn the inverter off, just push the inverter button right there. Now that inverter light turned off. Good news is that was a lot of the complicated stuff. This uh, sofa does turn into a bed. It's a king size air bed. Just take the cushions off. It's a high to bed and then it inflates. Here's just your uh, electric heater fireplace. The controls for it are right here. You have your heater switch right there, thermostat for the heater, and your fireplace on-off switch. Your DVD player, home theater system is going to be right here. This goes straight to the TVs on uh, input. So you just go ahead and turn that on. Get the TV remote, hit the input button right there. You're going to hit DVD HDMI 2 right there. So that gives you access to the DVD player itself. So now we can watch DVD on that TV. Now you do have Blu-ray to that TV too, the outside TV and the bedroom TV all from this Blu-ray player, just going to be source input button, but the home theater system is only going to be for the main living room area. Right here's your satellite non in motion. This is your 
WineGuard Traveler. It is set up for Dish Network only, I believe. You need to push and hold that button down. It'll say connecting to antenna. Once it does that, you can let go. It'll automatically go up and find the antenna. You have your selector box right there for satellite, dome satellite dish or traveler satellite dish, whatever one you have hooked up to your coax right here. We'll always recommend if you're going to hook up satellite, just get an RV tech out to have it installed for you. Hook up your receiver correctly rather than dealing with uh, your subscriber because they won't help you out very, very easily on an RV. It might be hard to see. There's a little switch right here. It's a little toggle switch that turns a little fan on and off in this compartment to kind of keep the heat down. Nothing special about this recliner. It is not bolted down in any way. You can move it wherever you want it to be. All your shade controls, you have individual buttons right here for Nightshade Master. You can push that button and that'll lift up all the nightshades in this compartment, in this room right here. Not much to see on your dinette. The ottoman does pull out. You can move wherever you want, but the, this dinette does not turn into a bed, but there is drawer storage underneath. Just pull straight out on it. And that'll be where you got some extra storage. I have a galley countertop extension. It's hard to see, but right underneath there's another little pull handle. I'm just going to pull that to unlock it, and that'll come out. You have drawers that are on it. Before you drive down the road or move the slide out in, you do need to make sure you close this all the way up. Just make sure it locks before you drive down the road. Right above is your convection oven microwave. Standard residential convection oven microwave. Runs on one power, 110 power only. Right underneath your stove cover. Now this stove cover you could completely remove just by pulling those pins and getting it out of the way. This is an induction stove top. You do need to make sure you make sure you have induction capable cookware. It will not work until you have the correct induction cookware on top of the uh, the burners. So it has to send some first. Below is going to be your dishwasher, Fisher Pikel. You select mode, whatever mode you want right here. Uh, once you're done, push the play button or the start button and close it. It'll do it automatically. This is where you add your soap. Right below is where you add your rinse aid. Right there. Now on the ceiling, you do have three fantastic vit roof vents, one in the galley, one in that bathroom, and then one in the rear bathroom. If you do need to manually operate them, you can just pull down on here. It is hinged, give you access to the crank handle right there to operate them manually. Left side of the motorhome, you have air filters. These are going to be for the roof ACs. If you need to clean them, kind of just pull them right here, put your fingers in, kind of give it a twist and pull it down. It's just a black sponge material. Pop it off, rinse it out, dry it out, and then put it back into place. The cold air is going to come out of the passenger side. Uh, the filtered side is going to be on the driver's side. Your refrigerator is just a standard uh, residential refrigerator. It's pretty straightforward. It needs 110 power to operate. Freezers down below. And across from the refrigerator down to the floor, you have your central vacuum cleaner port. This is where you hook up your central vacuum cleaner attachments. And right next to it is, is going to be your dustpan. So you just sweep everything on the floor right to this point, turn it on, and it'll suck all the uh, the dirt right into the vacuum. And your mid-coach bath right here, not too much to be aware of other than this is actually a gravity toilet. It is an electric gravity toilet. Just push that button down right there, and that'll flush it. If the electric side stops working, you can pop that cap off right there, kind of put a screwdriver or something long. That'll pop and open up that ball valve if you needed to. Hidden right next to the toilet is going to be another GFCI outlet. It's hard to find those, so I like to point those out. And you do have a, a control point right here. So you can set the uh, floor temperature. So it's your in-floor heating for all the tile area. That's how you would set it right there. It's in the off position down below. Uh, you can turn the water pump on and off at this point. Your vent fan, you can open and close and turn the fan on and off. And of course, your, vent, your uh, light switches. But past the other side of that door... In the middle of the hallway is going to be your bedroom roof AC thermostat controls the heating and cooling for the rear or the bedroom area of the motorhome. You have your bedroom slide out switches right here. Now these are Schwintech slides. It is best to have the engine running. You need to hold the button down the entire time. It'll turn itself off when you extend it or retract it. You have your bedroom light. Again, it has those little up and down arrows. So you can hold that button down to dim the lights. Right above it says water heat with a flame and then water heat with a lightning bolt. So your water heater is actually your Aqua Hot. Your Aqua Hot is your domestic water heater. It's a tankless water heater, uh, water on hot water on demand system. So if you want to make hot water using diesel, just turn that flame on right there. The diesel burner will turn on, get the whole temp the whole system up to temperature, then it turns itself off. As you start using hot water, it senses the cold water going in, it turns the system back on again. Just leave the diesel burner on. Uh, the diesel burner also needs to be on for that hydronic heating to work on your thermostats. 
So again, turn the diesel burner on, and then you, once it's up the temperature, turn it onto gas heat, set the temperature. Uh, heat's gonna come out of the floor registers. Right here in the galley area is gonna be right below the dishwasher. Now, right next to the water heater flame is a water heater lightning bolt. Now you can make hot water by using, using 110 power tankless water heater. Uh, that's only for making hot water. Domestic hot water has nothing to do with hydronic heating. So if you want to make hot water and not use your diesel, just turn the electric heating element on right there. Uh, usually it's easier to get the system up to temperature using the diesel burner. Once it's up to temperature, you turn it off, turn the electric heating element on. Again, it's a tankless water heater. It just heats up the water as you're using hot water. The, the caveat that's important to remember is this does not make the system hot for hydronic heating. And two, if the water coming in is pretty cold, we'll say below 50 degrees, it may not have enough BTUs in that heating element to kick it up to 120 degrees. So if your water's lukewarm on electric heating element because you have cold water coming in, you're gonna have to turn the diesel burner on. Now your last little features right here is gonna be your monitor panel. So you can check your tank level. So we're at 55% on the fresh, zero on the holding tanks. Uh, it'll tell you if your ignition is on, your park is on, and your battery voltages are right there. Now down below is your carbon monoxide detector. There is no propane on this one, so you don't have to worry about that. Your pocket door is just push down on that to unlock it, and then you can slide the door. Now, before you drive down the road, it's absolutely vital. You do make sure your pocket doors are latched in the locked, stowed position. You will know immediately that you didn't do that when you turn a corner. The pocket door will slam on you. Now, this is a sleep number bed. Now, right here is your uh, bed remote. You have L for the left side, R for the right side. When you are adjusting the bed, do make sure you're laying down on whatever side you're adjusting. Now in the bedroom, you have another TV. It works just like the front TVs and the outside TV. You have another sound bar right there. It's going to be hooked up to whatever you're watching on TV. Right below, this is where you would hook up your more satellite receivers. This would be your hamper and more drawers. Now, the drawers do have soft close features to them. Now, next to the bed, you do have another control panel. There'll be You can operate more lights from it. The fan low and high, that's going to be for your ceiling fan. Right above, you should have your ceiling fan turned off before you bring the side out rooms in and out. And then your last little feature is you can start and stop the generator right here. You can lock and unlock the doors. You can turn the lights on and off from this point too. It's really handy to have right at the bed. Go past the other pocket door from the bedroom to the bathroom. Your rear bath has a shower door. Do make sure this is locked before you drive down the road. Your shower actually has a skylight that you can open up right there. And it does have a light built into that skylight too. You have a body spray and then a, a rain shower head. It's going to be how you adjust either body spray or the shower head. Your mixer is going to be right there. Just to the left of the shower is going to be your rear toilet. Now this is a macerating toilet. Now on a macerating toilet, all that means is that it has to pump out the sewage to the holding tank. The holding tank is not below this toilet. It's going to be below the gravity toilet in the front bathroom. Because it's a macerator, it's very important that you just use the RB marine style toilet paper so the toilet does not clog up. Anything else in there will clog up that macerating uh, uh, head, and you'll have to have somebody come out, and you'll have to pay a lot of money for them to fix it and unclog it. So don't do that. Pretty straightforward. The instructions are actually on the lid of the toilet. I have a flush button right there. What it'll do is add water, and then it'll pump it all out. That was pretty easy. The other button uses less water. From the bathroom area, that only leaves the rear closet. The rear closet will have your washer, dryer, and some electrical controls. We'll try to walk through those pretty fast. And just to the left on the wall is actually a push button switch that'll turn on the closet light. There's your storage. Really not too much to it. There's all your Tiffin data plates, give you all your appliance information. Your weight ratings and your capacities are all gonna be right in there. Now, hidden behind this door are your 110 circuit breakers. If they're just like a normal house breaker, if they're tripped, turn them off and back on to, re to reset them. They are labeled below what everything's for. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it says sub panel right there. So everything on this is what gets powered up by the inverter when it's just inverting. Uh, right here is a hidden GFCI outlet. So if you don't have power at an outlet, check and make sure that break that GFCI didn't trip. These right here are GFCIs for that in-floor heating that's controlled in the mid-coach bathroom that does the heated tile floor throughout. 
And then of course, just like that outside uh, 12 volt distribution box on the driver's side front compartment, there's another 12 volt distribution box. It is labeled, but everything's for right above. Uh, if the breakers are tripped, the little white button will pop, pop out, push it back in to reset it. That's just going to be a shoe cubby or whatever cubby you want it to be. Your end wall safe. I will just refer you to the owner's manual how to properly set the, the combination on that. And then hidden behind these doors is going to be the washer and dryer. Dryer is going to be on top. You have your lint trap right there. That's where you can clean it out. Pretty straightforward. Just set whatever time you want it to dry to and hit the start button. Now right below is your washer. For your washer to work, turn the power on right there. It's hard to see, but you have this selector knob. Uh, if you don't know what C is, look over here. C is drain. And you just hit the start stop button for whatever cycle you want. If you need to interrupt a cycle, just hit the, the pause button. And let's say it's full of water. No matter how hard you pull this handle, it will not unlock. It'll just break. Just bring uh, this to the C, hit start. It'll pump out the water and then it'll open up for you. Now that was pretty much my fastest overview or walkthrough on this 2016 Allegro bus, which I know wasn't very fast. There's still about 40 features that I didn't even touch on. I do hope that helps a little bit, but just like any house, the more you use it, the more you understand it. And it's important to understand how the systems work on this. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. The good news I can tell you, if you do purchase a Tiffin motorhome, even though they were recently acquired by Thor, they have wonderful technical support and customer service over the phone and they really do make a good product. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope this helped out a lot. Enjoy your RV, it's beautiful.